Fire Tower is a two to four player competitive wildfire fighting game that takes 15 to 30 minutes. This easy to learn strategy game might seem simple, but with a range of tactics to choose from, it's actually a challenging yet thrilling game to master. Start by setting up the board and then placing separated piles of orange fire gems and purple fire break tokens next to it. Deal one bucket card face up in front of each player. Remove the Firestorm from the deck before dealing five cards to each player. Then cut the Firestorm card back into the deck. Protect your tower. In this game, only you can protect your tower. Your objectives are to defend your own while spreading the flames towards your opponents. Breach their towers and reach the back of their tower outlined in orange. At the beginning of the game, roll the weather vane die to determine the direction of the wind and starting player. The player most threatened by the wind will start the game. Here the wind is going east, so in a four-player game, the purple and blue towers are the most threatened. The purple tower player will go first. Turn order continues clockwise. At the beginning of your turn, you must expand the fire by placing one fire gem in the direction of the current wind. Choose one space that is to the left, right, above or below an existing fire gem, or the eternal flame, which is the four spaces where fire originates and expands. Place a gem on the space you choose. Never place a fire gem in a diagonal direction. If the wind is heading east on your first turn, you could choose to place your one gem here or here. But as the game progresses and the fire spreads, you could place it in any space east of the fire on the board, like here, 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 or here. After the first turn, you can only change the wind direction by playing a wind card from your hand of five action cards. Action cards. In the second part of your turn, you can play an action card. Each turn, choose one card to play and then discard it and draw a new card. Or, instead of playing a card, you can choose to discard as many cards as you want and draw back up to your hand size. Wind Cards Wind cards allow you to harness the destructive force of the gale. Take one of three actions. Change the wind to the direction shown on the card, roll for a new wind, and it can't be the same direction as it was before or keep the current direction and place one gem orthogonally touching in the direction shown on the card. Fire Cards Use fire cards to spread the flames in varying patterns, each with their own tactical advantage. They do not have to correlate with the wind and can be placed in any direction as long as one gem is orthogonally touching pre-existing fire. For example, play a burning snag to place four gems on the board in a square. The burning snag is connected here. Here is an explosion which replaces a fire gem with a fire break. We'll explain fire breaks in a moment, and then fills it in any of the eight vacant spaces around it with fire gems. An ember allows you to move any one fire gem on the board to any empty space adjacent to a pre-existing fire gem. Embers cannot remove a gem from a fire tower area. A line of three fire gems is placed with a flare-up. At least one fire gem has to be placed adjacent to a pre-existing fire gem. Water cards help you beat back the flames. Remove fire gems from the board in the pattern shown on the card. For example, use a smoke jumper to remove fire gems from the eight spaces surrounding a fire gem. The center gem remains on the board. Use the airdrop to remove a line of up to three fire gems. Partial removal of a pattern is fine. The fire engine will allow you to remove up to four fire gems in the shape of a square. Fire break cards. Use fire break cards to build your defenses. Build a dozer line to place two adjacent fire break tokens on the board. Fire cannot land on or pass through a fire break. Reforest or deforest cards can be used to remove fire breaks depending on what is drawn. Water, on the other hand, can pass over fire breaks. Fire breaks cannot be built edge adjacent into any previously existing fire break tokens on the board, but they can touch diagonally. For example, a scratch line could not go here, but it could go here, 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 or here. This means you can never build a perfect barrier. 
The only way to have two adjacent firebreak tokens is by placing the dozer line or playing an explosion. There are ways to surpass firebreak tokens, though they are limited. If you build a burning snag off this token, it is partially blocked by these two breaks. However, it can go here and here. These nine colored spaces make up your fire tower area. You cannot build fire breaks here or use water cards to extinguish flames in your tower. Once your tower has been breached, your only option is your bucket. Every player gets one bucket per game. Flip your bucket over to mark it as used and remove three fire gems as long as at least one is in your tower. The bucket is a free action. You can still take your full turn, including playing an action card. If the fire breaches your tower again, there is no way to extinguish the flames. Place a fire gem on the orange square of a player's tower to eliminate them from the game. They must then give you their cards, and you combine your hand with theirs and choose six cards to keep. All the other players get to draw from remaining cards, and play continues with a six card hand size. After the second elimination, repeat these actions and continue with seven cards. When a player is eliminated, they have an opportunity for revenge with a firestorm, but players cannot discard and redraw cards at this point. The last cards to note are event cards. The firestorm comes up once per deck cycle and must be played as soon as it is drawn. When the firestorm comes up, roll the weather vane die. The fire will spread in that direction. In this example, one space west of every gem on the board. Each player then gets to discard and redraw as many cards as they want. Roll the die again for a new win direction and continue play. Mutual aid is an optional way to play. If included, shuffle it into the deck after cards have been dealt and before cutting in the firestorm. When the card is drawn, you can either place a fire gem orthogonally adjacent to an existing gem, or the eternal flame. Note that fire gems added during mutual aid cannot be placed orthogonally adjacent to each other. Or place a firebreak token on the board following firebreak placement rules. Every player must place a firebreak. Or discard exactly three cards, no more and no less, and draw back up to your hand size. The last tower standing wins the game. For the team variant, play with the person sitting diagonally to you. Players stay in the game even if their tower is destroyed. The first team to burn down the other two towers wins the game. An optional way to play is with the champion of the wood card. The winner of the game will gain this card that grants bonus power in the next game. If you win a game while in possession of this card, flip it over to reveal the grand champion and an additional player power. If you lose, you must give the card to the new winner. Another new option for play is Shadow of the Wood. When a tower is burned, that player becomes a shadow. Their new objective is to win by burning all remaining active towers. On each turn is a shadow. The player does not get to place a gem, nor do they have a hand of action cards. Instead, they will roll the wind die once and take the corresponding action on the Shadow of the Wood card. If the shadow burns a tower, they are rewarded with a bonus roll. The shadow must burn all of the active towers in one turn to win, or a team of two shadows must burn all active towers during their consecutive turns. And that's how you play. The main objective is to harness the wind and fire to spread flames across the board and take out your opponents. Now go fight fire with fire in Fire Tower from Goliath.